Alaha, Sandresa. Hi, I'm Sandre, and I really hate velvet. So today we're going to talk about something very special. It's a very special episode, because it kicks off my conlanging show. This episode is going to preface how the show is going to work. I've seen many shows on YouTube do things related to conlanging. What they normally do is show real-world examples of the linguistic concepts they're presenting. Either that, or they apply these things to English sentences. I'm going to do that too, but I will be showing these phenomena in practice in conlangs built for this show. I will have three languages for this purpose. An oxlang, which we're going to call innerspeak, a naturalistic language, and a completely unnaturalistic mess. Now when I say unnaturalistic, I mean it's going to have very unnatural and unusual features. We're going to start with an auxiliary language, yay! We often abbreviate that to oxlang. Oxlangs are designed to be used by people who do not have a common language. Now, uh, you may know about the first couple of oxlangs ever made, Esperanto and Volapük. I'm not going to talk about them here, uh, because, you know, I have some issues with Esperanto. Oh no. Here come the keyboard warriors. There's also a thing called an international auxiliary language, or IAL. It's the same thing, but international. Boom. There's also a personal conlang and a secret conlang. A personal lang is one that a creator makes for their purpose alone, to be used only by them. I actually have a language like this. It's called Hellwish. I started making it around 2012. A secret language is used for, wait for it, secret conversations. Wow, who could have guessed? The most famous secret lang languages out there aren't actually really secret languages. Uh, I'd more use the term cipher languages, and that's kind of a stretch. Let's look at Pig Latin. If I were to say, Eikme ise upitste, you could probably understand what I mean. It's just, just English, but, you know, stupid. It's, sorry, sorry. It's upitste. <laughs> and the one making a secret language, don't make it obvious, because, you know, it's it's a secret. Actually, a really good secret language is made by uh, John D. It's called a Nokia. Here's a sample. Adagita. You have no idea what I just said, and I don't, because I lost the translation in the script. The next type is a broad category, the art lang. An art lang is one created to be beautiful, quirky, or any weird thing. Uh, some test out grammatical and linguistic possibilities, and if you have a free time, look, look up Ithkuil or Kebab. Just do it, they're great. Okay, up next is the kitchen sink lang. This is a language made hastily, normally to a limited extent. These test out some weird concept or idea, linguistically or phonologically, perhaps. Uh, they differ from art langs in the degree to which they're fleshed out. Art langs are much more developed. Next is the philosophical language. This is a language created to fit a philosophy, or once again, <gasps> linguistic concept. Examples are tokipona. I wrote examples plural, but that's one example, <laughs> which is made for minimalism. Oh, Lochban, the second example, <laughs> was made to be logical, based on predicate logic. So, yeah, that, those are the types. That's it for now. So the next episode of the linguistics portion of our channel, I'm going to talk about morphological typology. So my question for you all is, do you hate Velvet? Have you ever made a language? What are your thoughts on Esperanto? Do you hate it? I want to see the comments section burn. Okay, bye. Bless and be.